Jumping in on Manx Radio with Howard and Chris Kane. Hello, good evening, and welcome. Is it spring already? No, sadly it's not. We're still in January. But no matter what the weather is doing on a Saturday night, we can guarantee keeping the temperature warm with some of the best in modern and contemporary jazz. Jumping in with myself, H. And me, Chris. Yes, welcome along to this week's show. And as we head toward the end of the month, the stark realisation that there are still 346 days before Christmas hits home as the dank cold weather seems dark, stark and joyless. Well, at least until jumping in on Saturday night brings a few rays of warm, jazzy goodness over the airwaves. So, H, what's had you dreaming of sunnier climes this week and what would be your holiday essentials? Well, mm, time and tide waits for no man. I'm never quite too sure, actually. There's so much going on these days. How about a new Nordic trio, Le Guin, up in the Little North? A few snide remarks, maybe, and... uh, you know, I might throw in a bit of Dave Douglas. And from me, well, we hear Stu's news, strictly nothing to do with Manx politics, I promise. We head to the uh, garden with green thumb. We dispel an urban myth, or do we? And to kick off the show, we're all in with the Tobias Becker Big Band. Thank you. 
Very nice indeed. Composer and arranger Jochen Neufer with his first full suite written for big band, uh, Augmented Reality, and that was all in. Showing why I think he's been a trusted composer for the Metropole Orchestra for some while, entrusting his music in this case to a great big band of pianist and composer and longtime colleague Tobias Becker. Jochen's worked with many bands, including the Grammy Award-winning collaboration between the Metropole Orchestra and Snarky Puppy, which he produced. And I, for one, will be looking out for further albums from both him and Tobias in the future. Hmm. Another big band sound. There are so many out there. It's unbelievable, must admit. Uh, from big to small. And, well, if you talk about the jazz piano trio, you're not going to chat too long before you come on that sort of Nordic sound. You could think you go back to Jan Johansson. You think of Still Going Strong, the great Bobo Stenson, uh, his album Sphere, featured in the top 10 or 20 for a lot of jazz critics in 2023. Booger Vesseltoff, of course, and the late great Esbian Svensson. All sort of came out of the palette of American jazz, but steeped in their sort of that Nordic sound, that cold, slightly ethereal, more spacey, less swinging, all the rest of it. You know the general gist of it. Well, there's a new one on the scene now on the ACT label, Oscar Andreas Haug uh, and his trio called Little North. All three young guys, Benjamin Norholm, uh, or Benjamin Norholm Jacobson, uh, and on the piano, the bassist, Martin Brunberg, Always a struggle, some of these uh, names. Martin Brumbjörg Rasmussen and the drummer, Lassie Jakobsen, with a sort of sound which is ethereal again, can be quite cinematic, a little bit melancholic, quite beautiful, lots of different twists and turns. Let's have a listen to Le Guin. <laughs> Thank you. 
and that fooled you a little bit at the beginning. A piano trio with the first thing you hear is pretty much a trumpet. Yeah, fooled me as well, I must admit. But that's the way it goes. That's the first track on the album, Le Guin. And it is a piano trio featuring, as you gathered there on a couple of tracks, the trumpet of Asker Andreas Haug. Uh, fine sound he makes as well. Very nice player. And I love the overall sound of the trio with that laid back sort of Nordic sound. As I say, they're all very young. They found that the audience... They reach as being quite young, they say. They've been just a few years together after their first album in 2020, a build-up quite a a loyal following on and offline, which they're very pleased about, and also has had the honour of receiving the most important cross-genre music award in Denmark, the Danish Music Award. uh, The pianist Benjamin Noholm says, uh, I think the song-like atmospheric character of our music makes it easy for people to connect with. The name, by the way, they were just going to call themselves North because they liked all things uh, Nordic. However, being very switched on and uh, kids of the digital generation, they discovered just North was virtually untraceable in the digital space, so they changed the title of the trio to Little North. The album is on act. Uh, well worth checking out. I think that could be a sound to look out for as well, with a quite a distinctive sound and quite liking it, with that sort of quite cool sound with the trumpet as well, albeit that makes it a quartet. While you wait, it's called, you will have to wait just a little bit, because its release date is the 1st of March this year. And uh, a lot of young trumpeters, I think, taking the style of uh, Matthias Eich a little bit further. And uh, and it certainly it, trumpet playing is uh, beginning to sound sort of more like a flute-like in many ways, I think. One of the most in-demand bassists of recent years uh, must be Linda May Han O, oh, not least for her work with Pat Metheny, who we saw her with a couple of years ago at Ronnie Scott's. Well, she still makes time for solo releases. And from her latest and perhaps most complex release, The Glass Hours, here she is with Respite.
atmospheric indeed. Not a car album, as we often say in the show, but uh, rewarding if you take the time to listen to it and uh, bears repeated listenings. Linda May Han O and her band with respite taken from the recently released The Glass Hours. And what a great band. Sarah Serp on vocals, Mark Turner on tenor, Fabian Almazan on piano electronics, Obed Calvair at the drums, and of course, Linda May Han O on bass. Hmm, very nice. I enjoy that one. A great uh, lineup there as well. Respite, res- respite, respite. I never know which way it is. It is. Suffice to say, Omid Zakal there, I think, was playing uh, with Winston Lasalas with the uh, big band when I saw him last year. Wonderful drummer. And they did some small stuff. And uh, terrific, really fine player. And used to play with, uh, of course, Dave Holland as well. Wonderful. Um, Dave Douglas, well, I've been a fan of his for years. You can't keep up with his prodigious output. You sort of, you've barely started spinning one on your desk or down. And another one, one comes out. And another one's come out again. Yes, the, uh, <laughs> Lord knows how many he's got. Uh, and I came across this one last year, Meaning and Mystery. And from it, we're going to hear Painter's Way. Thank you. 
such a varied player. And uh, I was looking, I thought that was actually about 2012, looking at the notes, 2006 that was recorded. It sounds recent. Then you think, gosh, it's it's sort of almost 20 years ago now, as we're in 2024. And as Dave notes himself in the liner notes, music goes by fast. Listeners know the first two recordings of this quintet will notice this is a very considerably different version of the band and vision of the band. And uh, he also makes a nice note about Yuri Kane playing the Fender Rhodes there. He says, uh, it bugs me that when it's talked about like a period instrument as if no new music has been written for the harpsichord since the 17th century, like some kind of throwback or freak show. But uh, Yuri plays the Rhodes and makes it very much alive. And it's still, 2024, very much back in vogue after having its heyday in the 70s, I guess, then dying out almost entirely for 20 or 30 years and then right back in vogue again. A uh, cracking lineup from that band, as is always the case. He always surrounds himself with first class players. David Douglas Trumpet, Donnie McCaslin on tennis sax, Yuri Kane, as I say, on Fender Rhodes there, James Genus on bass, and the wonderful and uh, slightly underrated, I often think, Clarence Penn on the drums. The album's called Meaning and Mystery. Of course, uh, there is a new Fender Rhodes around today. Yours for uh, in the region of 12 grand, I think. Yeah, I'll have two. Yeah. <laughs> now, next for me, pianist David Ake, or Ake, A-K-E, but Ake, I think it is. He's been a firm favourite of mine since uh, the first release I got of his a couple of years ago. However, it's typically his seventh release on the Positone label and Green Thumb, for which he puts together a terrific quartet. From it, here's Stu's News. <laughs> from pianist and composer David Ake, taken from his latest release on the Positone label Green Thumb and some great tenor work there from Tony Malaby along with the house regulars and dream rhythm section of uh, Boris Kozlov on bass and introducing the piece with his wonderfully 
musical dancing style drummer Rudy Royston, all of whom are band leaders in their own right, of course. Despite a recording career spanning some 25 years, David Ake doesn't often have time to get into the studio. As I say, this is his seventh release in 25 years, and uh, alongside his career as a professor, a multi-award winning musicologist and author. But I'm glad to say that when he does, he makes it count. Green Thumb is out now and worth chasing down. It certainly is. And Tony Malaby, of course, uh, plays with old favourite Henri Texier. Indeed well, so. done quite a bit. And he's got a new one out, which we haven't actually featured on the show yet, I don't think. Uh, a new one, I think, is it something like an Indian's Week or an Indian's Work or something came out, I think, on the uh, Level Blur or whatever the replacement Level Blur label was last year. And um, I've heard a little bit of it. It sounds very good. Uh, but, I mean, most of the stuff of Henri Texier I really enjoyed in any case. Uh, a father and son duo now, uh, John and David Schneider, both trumpet players, if they're going to bring an album out together, what else would you call it but snide remarks?
Hi, this is Maria Schneider, and you're listening to Jumpin' In with H and Chris on Manx Radio. Yeah, there you go. Something a little bit different there. Julian Sartorius. Yeah, I know. Uh, me too. I, I don't know him. Well dressed, right. though, I bet. Great. Yes, Greg. <laughs> but um, he is a drummer and a percussionist and an artist. He's one of those ones out of the stable of Pierre Favre, who indeed he did study with when he was younger. And he also does actual art. So he does percussion sounds and he does art as well. He is Swiss, of course, and uh, bridges the gap between, he says, organic timbres and the vocabulary of experimental electronic music. And he's released numerous solo albums, uh, are audiovisual artworks, collaborate with writers, artists, performs live in small venues, festival stages. You get the picture in any case, but uh, took that from a selection of Swiss jazz, which I've had for a wee while. And there's some interesting stuff on it as well. People like uh, Nick Birch is there and Vane, the wonderful band. Uh, terrific. I yeah, enjoyed that one in any case, a little bit of something different. And before that, uh, we had... Who do we have before that? Oh, we had the, um, the Schneiders, didn't we? Yeah. It was at Schneid Remarks, or Schneid Remarks, as you like to take a look at it. And a great sound, John and David Schneider uh, on trumpets. Jeb Patton on piano. Ugana Ogekwo on bass. Nope, don't know him either. And Andy Watson on the drums. And they say they wanted to explore the possibilities and potential of the two-trumpet format, which they've done very well on their new album, and you can catch that one on Cellar Live label. Blowing their own trumpets, certainly. Well, that's about it for this week's show. But before we go, there's just about time to fit in a track from the latest release from Trio Grande 2.0. In its first incarnation, the trio of saxman Will Vinson and guitarist Gillette Hexelman and Antonio Sanchez had their plans to tour cut short due to the pan- pandemic, of course. But now in version 2.0, Sanchez has been replaced by drummer and bass player Nate Wood from Kneebody. And yes, I did say drummer and bass player. And yes, he really does play both at the same time. Yes, which is amazing a, to watch. It's yeah. something to behold. We didn't even notice at first when we caught him playing with Kneebody in Brussels a couple of years ago. But amazing and uh, amazing facility on both instruments. Now, uh, the band uh, have uh, uh, lot the impression they can play pretty much any kind of music. Combined skills covering mainstream, uh, jazz, rock, folk, and they can switch from cutting-edge fusion, as we'll shortly hear, to dreamy ballads without missing a beat. On Urban Myth, the title track, we uh, on the new album, guitarist Gilad Hexelman says he was re-listening to some old Prodigy albums when he came up with a track. 
So it's a bit of a fire starter. See you next week. All the best for now. Mm, look after yourselves and see you then.